Okay, I'm going to start the video. Pops and Sweet Pea are inside talking. They don't even know I'll get the video on. But I just, me and Sweet Pea went to the store for Pops. Look at all Pops' cats. Now look, Sweet Pea bought this bag for, uh, for the cats. And I got, uh, Pops needed some vitamins. But I want you to see all these kitties. Look how hungry these cats are. He's gonna, somebody's gonna come get the cats fixed for Pops. I call for my kids. I call this one Harley. This one Pepper. My cat that passed away. Baby. That looks just like Baby. Sorry. Pops wants me to, t they're gonna get fixed. Sweet Pea and Pops, I got the thing on. This is a video. That's why I'm talking. Sweet Pea, Pops. Say hi. Hi there. Hello. Thank we you just, for all your prayers. We're doing better. Pops, Maybe. actually, Pops had his treatment yesterday, and he said today, normally after his treatments, normally he's feeling not as good, but to, uh, yesterday he felt much better. So I wanted to get uh, a little video of us. At least I'm smiling. Yes. I'm smiling. Well, sometimes I ain't smiling. I tell you, the cats know that. And, uh, Anyway, everything's going as, as God promised, he says. You know, he'd never leave us nor forsake us, regardless of how bad or good yeah. we feel. Yeah. He don't have the conditions. You know, we don't have to feel it. He's still there, but whether you feel bad or whether you're good. Yeah. You know? Well, I speak health. I speak yeah, health. He speaks health. You yeah. shall live and not die to uh, declare the works of the Lord. Uh -huh. I speak blessing to you. Total health. We're gonna. We might I talk don't know a little why bit. I keep thinking this, so Connie. Sometimes I wish you were back into my baby sister's age. I know it's you just say hi to her on the phone and tell her I'm okay. And and Linda lives. She was a school teacher, and she lives in Saco, Texas. A funny thing about it, uh, Rusty Williams, who runs the station's uncle, has a big church there out in the woods, and everybody goes. It's a. It's a is an all, all denomination. This man mm -hmm. is a Vietnam veteran and he's married to a girl that I used to sing in trios with, Martha Stutter. She's married to her mm -hmm. and she's an organist. But uh, that church, I don't know the address. I wanted to write them a letter that address for that church. I don't even know the name of the church, Sackville, Texas. It's Lucas spelled backwards, what it is. Oh, let me tell I just remembered, I forgot. I said if I could do the video. Me and uh, Sweet Pea went to Walmart, and I told Pops, I mean, uh, uh, Sweet Pea, uh, she also has, you know, certain the views about, like, 501c3, if you're a church, and I told Sweet Pea, I used to have 501c3, nonprofit, but I don't do that anymore. But some Christians actually are opposed to it for good reasons. So Sweepy was telling me, do you know, John, what they have to sign at the bottom of the papers when you get a 501c3? And I told her, I know, because I filed myself at the time many years ago. I said, but do you know President Obama changed that? She says, he did. I said, yes. At the end, you actually have to swear allegiance to Allah at the end of the he changed it. And Sweepy's <laughs> eyes, she was going to go for that. And I said, no. I said, I'm well, kidding. You heard what? <laughs> that, that was true. <laughs> like, she believed it. You said, you said like John Oscroft. He pulled my leg. Attorney lane. General. Yes. Hey. You know, he Pops. said the only, the only king he had was Jesus. Yes. You know, he the was Attorney pulling General, my remember? leg, Pops. Yes, yeah, so uh, I was kidding. Her. He was kidding me. I, I know he was kidding him. But you know, well, you remember what in the politics, uh, uh, they made you retract what he said. Pop said a he friend said, here once, an older John man. Said, only one king I don't remember what happened to that guy. Yeah. But yeah. I came over to visit one day, and, and the guy was like supposed to be a Bible scholar. I forget his name. So, you know, you Pops. run into people. And as soon as I came to visit Pops that day, this was about a year ago, they said, uh, John you know, knows the Bible. And who was that friend that stayed here that had the dog? What was his name? And he was in the, the in the wheelchair, the older guy. Oh, uh, Richard. Okay, well, he was here Jim, for a while. Jim Richard. Jim, I think. Jim. Yeah, he's up in, yes. Yeah, he's up in Indiana somewhere. He's had a, he had another heart attack and he's in the hospital. Okay, I was telling the story. I'll tell the sweet thing. I came to visit Pops. You know, this was a long time ago when I first met Pops. 
and he had an old man named Jim living here. And Jim was, you know, sober, AA history. And, but Pops told me that Jim, you know, studied the Bible in the original languages. I'm kind of, that's what this can be fit in with the olive thing. And so I was sitting here, and I thought maybe he does have, you know, knowledge of the Greek, and maybe. So Jim said, and it was a verse that he was telling Pops, I guess. And Jim said, now, do you know, in the New Testament, and I, I, Jim believed it, I guess, he said, do you know what the original language for the term Antichrist is? Now, I've heard of many, you know, oh. stories, and Jim said that in the original, it was spelled, it wasn't even like 666, you got to, no, it said Obama, actually, that was uh, the term, so I, I didn't know what to tell Jim, I said, I've never kind of run across that one before, so sometimes... <laughs> I was telling that. Now, Pops, what about... He was the only person I heard say that. Though. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about... Uh, what verses have you been reading anything in the Bible, Pops? Oh, recently, it compares the whole world. We have... Uh, polluted our earth. Where our rivers, we ain't drink the water no more. We polluted our oceans. And we polluted our bodies. And every, the whole world is doing it. We're destroying ourselves. On one side, we'd be done gone if it wasn't for Jesus Christ standing over us and the Holy Ghost. It wasn't Him here protecting His work. It's His. It ain't ours. If it, him, if it wasn't protected, we'd done destroyed the whole thing. Humanity would have done destroyed the whole earth this if it wasn't for Jesus Christ who died for this. So every human being breathing. Yeah. He sent the Holy Spirit down on every human being. It's only our minds who close him out of our lives. God so is, we cheat ourselves. God is present. We I cheat quoted. ourselves. Yes, we'll all grow old. Yes, we'll all go back there when we believe that he, he forgave me for my sins. That he was, yeah, and I made my mistakes too, like everybody else. If you've been in prison, almost everybody in prison, if they've got caught. So you ain't any different than me. God bless, go back to Jesus Christ, and he'll keep you out of there. Yeah. God bless you. Yes. Sweet pea, anything? The verse, I read a scripture uh, last night, I was doing my reading, and I always try to focus, I'll read through the chapters, and then I'll try to focus what verse is God speaking, and it was Acts 15, which I'm very familiar with, and I taught it off the cuff the last few weeks before I read it, I just wound up teaching it, but I like the verse, James this would be a good teaching, I taught it before. Mm -hmm. They're debating whether God is going to accept these Gentiles into Christianity without them having to be circumcised or keep the law. Now, I've been teaching that on the videos, that we're saved by faith and by grace. But the quote, when they're debating this, James, who is one of the leaders at the Church of Jerusalem, he listens to Peter's story, how God showed him God's going to accept the Gentiles, and they're having a discussion. We call that the first church council in history, which is in Acts 15. And James, who's the main leader of that group of Christians, he stands up, and this is what he says. He quotes, do you know who he quotes in Acts 15? James, the leader of the Jerusalem church. He quotes a prophet in the Old Testament. No, I don't know. I know. I'll tell you what, I believe that. See, that was for a reason. No. Let me give it that to you first, that, that, Go ahead and finish. He that, quotes, that was for a reason. He quotes Acts 9. Uh, he quotes Amos 9. Amos 9. Mm -hmm. And the quote is this. James says, God said that in the last days, the tabernacle of David would be restored, yeah. and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called are going to be in this restoration of what's described as the Tabernacle of David. I've read a lot of good man uh, views on that that I think might not be correct. But what James quoted was, after this I will return and I will restore the Tabernacle of David and I will build up the walls that are broken down and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. And the reason James quotes that prophecy in Amos is he's saying... Look, 
even in the Old Testament prophets, God said, the Gentiles are going to call on my name. So that's why James quotes it. But why did I, I, I'm very familiar with that, but this is what I got out of it. Some of what you're saying, Pastor. I, I, I focused on the prophecy that said, I will rebuild the walls that have fallen down. I will restore that which is broken. I will, did you, yes, you found it there. Mm -hmm. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, after these things, I will return, I will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen, I will build again the ruins, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. So in context, James is showing, God said the Gentiles are going to call on my name, but what I got practically out of this was, God's going to do the rebuilding and the restoring, and he does it after the things are broken. So sometimes we got to be, in our lives, we go through a brokenness, and yeah. then what God does with us is going to be of more value. There's a verse in Hebrews that says, God took away the first, that's the old covenant, that he might establish the second. And it says he took away the first because of the weakness and the unprofitableness of it. That's talking about the old covenant law. and God. But in our lives, uh, practically, sometimes I did ministry radio for many, many years, Put a lot of time, but you know, I drank for all those years I was drinking. Now, God was merciful, but when I read that Hebrews verse a couple years ago, I felt like God said, look, John, I took that all away because it, the weakness and the unprofitableness of it. You were doing ministry, you were doing church, but you were addicted, you were an alcoholic, and so I had to let all that go, a lot of stuff I had to go through, but now the second time, I'm going to do more. I'm going to give you something better. And so, in our lives, sometimes we go through a lot of bad stuff because God says, I still got something. Now, Pops, you can talk. Uh, on the subject you're talking about, there is a Dr. Doug McClain who taught uh, Habits of Man at SMU Dallas, Texas. And he met me. And uh, back in the day, of the Jews and all that. There was a lot of occultism. Oh, and and they had to go into the they had to go into the uh uh Jewish uh circumcisions to keep people away from them cultism because in childhood uh cultism on children can really affect a child. Bad. Didn't me? Yes. And uh he wrote a, a book how to remove the family block. Okay. And Dr. Doug McLean, he is now teaching at the Methodist Hospital, the Methodist University in Atlanta, Georgia, I think. But he taught at SMU. He became my close friend. Uh, he knew Brenda. He knew Rose. He knew Brenda. And he said, Barbara, that's your problem. There's a stumbling block between you and everything, even yourself. Yeah. And God will remove it, and he did. He, now, watch something interesting. Yeah, I can't explain it like him because in the book he explained it in a lot of detail and for students, students to read, you know, ministerial students especially. Because they'd run into a lot of people out there, they don't know what's wrong with them. Yes. But a lot of people, like Shelley Boy, he had been touched by them coast as a child and they don't know how to get free of that stuff. I want to show you something interesting. I do not know how. Pops does not watch any videos. I tell him, I got you on video, Pops. Now, the last two weeks, if you watched all the videos, that's why I give the date. I've dealt with the occult. i got another one you didn't see yet. I'm still going to up on I've been dealing with the occult, witchcraft, and the authority. We, and now look, Pops has not watched any of those videos. And look at what he's talking about. He's talking about how he had the experience, even learning from that doctor, the effects of the occult. So the, the theme, it's interesting, uh... Sometimes my friends will bring things up and they don't realize it's confirming or God's saying, yes, this is what I want to deal with right now. So Pop said, no idea that I've been teaching that in the last few days. I've been yes, our, our friend, my very, very close friend, uh, Brother Bear, he's also helped, uh, he helps you get rid of that stone. God keeps putting these people in my life who have to get rid of that stumbling block, and I get closer to every day I live to make my preparation to go on to be with the good Lord. That's where we're all going. 
Yes. And that's what we prepare for. And we go up there and be happy to have with. And it's, yeah. uh, death is not really a sad thing. What we have to go through is tough. But sooner or later, and then today, one one day long, soon I had to get with my friends and decide what they'll do with the body. I want to discuss that with Connie and, and Brother uh, 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 Preacher John today. What should you do? What Should you be cremated? Does it matter? Should you be buried in a coffin? Does it matter? The VA is going to want to know which one I want. Yes. And I, we'll talk about that today. Yeah. Pops. Pops, now, I took a video. I turned it on when I was in the kitchen feeding the cats. Pops is old as cats. Do you love the cats, Pops? I love the little kitties. But, but, they, but they just yeah. basically weren't your choice to I have them. The mama no, cats. No, they weren't my choice. And I, right now, I don't need all the responsibility. Some, if somebody is going to come take them and give them all surgeries, but they don't do this again to somebody else. And then when I get them all surgery, uh, a lot of people will take them. A lot of people want them once they have to have shots and surgery. So I'll be able to get rid of the ones I don't want to keep. I just want one, really. He likes the little brown and white one. Right. I've just seen them all. I had them all in the kitchen. When, they, when I fed them, they all came at once. So they're all on video. Sweet Pete, give us the last word because we won't go too long on this video. Okay. Something you feel maybe God's got on your heart. Well, just that it's great to, to be here and have fellowship with John and Pops. I love Pops. I, I, I think the Lord has brought us together. You know, He established His relationships. It's just a real blessing to be here and uh, to fellowship with Him. Okay, now I'm going to title this. Is Obama the Antichrist? <laughs> no, Look, I, but no, I'm going to do he that be because you know people. Are, be some right people, there, some people are not going to watch it when they see that. <laughs> but I'm going to do that, and then you'll see why I did that. Okay, <laughs> so I figured I'd do that. God bless everybody. Forerunner.